Hunt's on her beast. My name's Ken Kaplan, and this is a Moto Guzzi V7 1972 rare uh, cafe racing Moto Guzzi that um, has had a lot of work done to it, a lot of high performance work. Uh, I'd be outside riding it today, but if you look outside, it's pouring rain out. Beautiful fall day, but um, not a day that you'd want to be out riding this baby in the slippery rain and leaves, um, which is a shame because I would have loved to rip this thing up the street because it sounds awesome. I rode it last week when our guys finished it. We just put about 60 hours of labor into it. I have all the time cards, all the work orders. I'll go over that with you in the showroom. But just to give you a quick high level, this bike was set up for road racing. Um, it's got a high compression piston, uh, dual plug head, 36 millimeter carburetors. Uh, the stocks are, are 32, I believe. Um, open air filters, uh, it's a pod, pod style air filter, and a set of LaFranconi exhausts. We did a compression test on it. This baby has 215 PSI per cylinder. It's a lot of torque, a lot of compression. You crack the throttle, the whole bike shifts from the uh, torque of the V-twin. And uh, it's fast, I think it for a rip down the road, and it handles really good. It's got a set of aftermarket dual rate shocks on it, a set of Pirelli tires, Pirelli Phantom tires, and it's a kick-ass bike. Um, very rare bike, the NED, NED value on this bike is $11,825, and they're going up regularly. Uh, the gentleman we bought this from, Mr. Morrell, is uh, one of the karate instructors at my kid's karate dojo. He um, had two bikes. He had a Norton 850 Commando and he had this V7 and uh, his family was into performance bikes and they had good taste. This is a really, really rare piece and it's outfitted nicely with the high compression pistons, uh, high flow, dual plug heads, oversized carbs, exhaust, suspension, brakes, a lot of the stuff, the safety wire on the bike. No passenger pegs on the bike right now, but it has a set of passenger peg mounts that comes with it. Why don't you bring it, well, bring, bring it in the showroom and I'll give you a, a uh, rundown on uh, <clears throat> exactly what we did to the bike. In the Side to give you a demo on it because the exhaust note is uh, very unmistakable, very uh, authoritative. Exhaust note from the high compression engine. Uh, this is one of one of Moto Guzzi's first high performance motorcycles, and um, it's a hoot to ride. It really is. It's got the center stand, uh, so it's easy to display it in your in your museum or showroom. Um, definitely a really rare piece. Um, these would be, these are the uh, passenger foot peg mounts I was talking about to come with it. I've got all the time tickets, we, we punch time tickets here on each bike we work on. Um, it was just under 60 hours over the course of uh, several weeks time that we put into the bike. The time tickets uh, add up to just under 60 hours. Uh, I've got two sets of keys for the bike. Um, with the 60 hours of labor plus the parts and uh, shipping of the parts, the total that we invested in the bike was $6,075 into parts and restoration services. Um, the bike has been recently repainted. Uh, tank and side covers were repainted with uh, new graphics, reproduction graphics, so it looks excellent. The shocks look like brand new. Here's a clue, it's falling, the leaves coming inside the building out. Um, this was first Moto Guzzi's first cafe racer. It's in beautiful condition. It's a 45 year old classic Italian motorcycle. Like I said, the energy value is just under 12,000. We just put six grand into it. Definitely a good bike to invest into because they're, they're rare and they're going up in value. Um, 
Motorcycle mechanics editor Charles Dean commented in his 1972 road test that the V7 Sport with a, with a factory claimed 70 horsepower was like a BMW with a, a lot more power, a bit more acceleration, a higher top speed, better braking, but was also significant, significantly the most expensive superbike available in Britain. So this is a very rare commodity, not something your run-of-the-mill guy had. They were very expensive bikes then. And this bike came from the Morrell collection. Um, was in his family for many years, uh, stored indoors. You can see it's in beautiful condition. Um, we just did a full detail and polish on the bike. Uh, we went through and cleaned the carbs. I can read over the work order exactly what they did to the bike. Um, the tech put 38 and a half hours into it, did an initial compression test, um, tested up 215 PSI, installed a brand new battery, cleaned all the connectors for the battery and the battery the tray, uh, cleaned and lubricated the points distributor, uh, set the timing, gapped the points, checked the entire wiring harness um, and all the wiring connectors, uh, cleaned the starter. Uh, the starter was dismantled and rebuilt. Uh, the starter wasn't working when we got it, so he started a Dismantled that and rebuilt it, cleaned it, the starter brushes in all the contacts, checked and tightened all the bolts on the bike. The gas tank was removed and cleaned with metal rescue insides and then bicarbonate sodium blasted and rinsed. Uh, new fuel valves with pre screens were installed into it. Uh, we disassembled and ultrasonically cleaned and rebuilt the carburetors uh, using the genuine Delorto carb kits. Again, these are 36 millimeter oversized carburetors to go with the oversized valves. Um, gives a, a nice top end rush, a lot of power. Uh, we then synchronized and adjusted the carburetors, uh, lubricated and adjusted the throttle cables. Uh, we polished and cleaned the throttle slides, uh, set the needle height to match on both, routed all the cables correctly. Um, we installed a brand new headlight in it, uh, installed a new headlight shell and bulb, uh, put a new brake lever on it, uh, new grips, put a brand new OEM taillight lens and an OEM, a new OEM gas cap. So the gas cap along with the paint job. And the paint job was very very recently done uh, before we acquired the bike. Very nice job on the paint job. Uh, it's got a brand new uh, NOS gas cap, uh, a new tail light lens on it, and again the brake lever also. You can see the brake lever is a little bit shinier than the clutch lever. Uh, it's brand new um, NOS lever. Bars are in beautiful shape. Grips are brand new. Um, the bike, uh, if you want it, uh, Registered, we can register the bike for, or we can get we can get a previous registration for you. Uh, right now, we're selling without a title or a registration. Um, the previous registration, register the bike cost about two hundred bucks. So, if you want that done, we can get it done for you for an additional two hundred dollars, approximately. So, um, and that would be provide a previous registration. Two inches of range in the last couple of days, so I guess we'll be videoing all our good bikes indoors. Speaking of which, I forgot the shifting pattern is backward on, backwards on it. It's a right side shift. So I started off in second gear inside there. But uh, goodness gracious, everything's blowing around the office here in the showroom. So the bike um, is a uh, good running bike. Um, the Pirellis that are on there have been on there for a while, so if you're going to run it, you might want to consider a new set of tires sometime in the near future. Um, and headlight, taillight works. There's no turn signals on this bike. Um, they weren't required back then, although you can install them if you wanted to. So, um, what else can I tell you about this bike? It's an Italian engineered sports bike, obviously. We only made it for three years. This is a second year of production. It was based on the V7 Roadster, but has a new frame uh, clip on handlebars, which uh, gives it a real sporty look. Um, it was very popular because it was lighter and handled really well. The V7 Sport formed the basis for subsequent models and ultimately led to the very successful Le Mans series. So the value uh, is that um, it's going up in value and that's reflected in the NADA value. If you take a look at the bike, the uh, original front fender uh, appears to be in very good condition. It appears to be a polished stainless. Original aluminum rims look to be in good condition, uh, as does the motor Gozi brakes. The front forks, the chrome on the forks is excellent. The headlight bucket's actually brand new. Um, the grips are new. The, the bars appear to be good and straight. The tack and speedometer. Um, the, tack, the speedometer is showing only 15,200 miles. I have every reason to believe that's original mileage on the bike. It's been in the same family for a long time. Um, the bike uh, was at one point dropped on this side. You can see there's a little road rash 
on the brake lever here uh, and also on the head there's a little bit of road rash here and a little crack here on the high performance uh, head cylinder fin um the lafran coney if i pronounce that right i think i just murdered that exhaust doesn't have any scratches on it so i believe this exhaust was mounted uh, after it was um dropped on this side so uh, the bars appear to be straight they may not be the original ones there's a small crack in the headlight mount here it doesn't affect the functionality of it there's a crack there i want to point that out uh, kenny did i leave anything out are there any anything any defects i didn't point out on the bike i think that's it Ken. um if you have any questions about the bike give us a call at 860-445-4724 we don't claim to be motor guzzy experts we we uh we own the new england motorcycle museum we see a little bit of all different bikes here but i can tell you i've never seen one of these before come through I would assume it's a very rare bike and uh, it's in excellent condition. It's a bike we would roll into the museum and display exactly like it is. So for what it's worth, uh, we think it's absolutely beautiful. I haven't seen a nicer one um, online uh, come up recently on a completed listing. So I think it's a pretty rare piece. If you have any questions about it, again, give us a call. We're here Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 at 860-454-7024. You show them the gauges to do it up close on the gauges? Yeah, okay. That's about it. Um, good luck bidding on the bike. I'm going to roll it back in the museum and put her on display for uh, until somebody buys it. And hopefully I'll remember to put it in the right gear when I take off this time. I put it, I click down, I'm supposed to click up for the first gear. So good luck bidding on it. God bless Italy for building kick ass sport bikes like this one.